Hi everyone, my name is Yulia Panchenko and thank you for joining this webinar. I am a boudoir, nude and portrait photographer based in Florida, United States. I'm also the founder of Believe in Boudoir, which is the largest and most complete boudoir and nude photography platform. I have been a photography educator for the past 3-4 years. I first started on YouTube, but then moved on to teaching to, uh, at photography conferences in the US and also in Europe. In 2022, I did a boudoir and nude photography workshop tour in the US, and in 2023, I will continue my workshops in Canada, uh, Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, the UK, France, and Australia. And just a quick heads up, uh, to save time on questions, this webinar is automated, but I'm back here in the chat room focused on answering your questions. So please use the chat box for any questions at any time. First, let's go over the webinar content so you can decide if you want to stay till the end or not. In this webinar, I will first briefly talk about my journey as a photographer. This is important because I'm sure many of you have or had similar strugglings. After that, I will dive straight into the webinar and uh, walk you through the photographer's roadmap from start to success. Uh, there are 13 checkpoints on this map, and if you are here, you're probably stuck at one of the points. So, Please watch to the end and I promise you will discover where you stand on this map and find out that you've missed a few checkpoints. Uh, then we'll talk about the potential obstacles that you will face and how to overcome them. After the webinar, I will give a sneak peek into BIB TV, which is my photography educational platform. Lastly, I will give you an exclusive offer to join BIB TV if you want to add uh, new skills to your existing skills and reach the final destination. Let me start um, from my story. I was born and raised in Azerbaijan and I moved to the United States in 2010. I got my master's degree from the University of North Texas in hospitality and tourism management. Uh, at that time, uh, I was dreaming of working in luxurious hotels and resorts. However, my husband, who, who was a soldier at that time, got stationed in El Paso, Texas, which was not really big on tourism and hospitality. I applied to many hotel management positions, but uh, they were all overstaffed, so I ended up get a, getting a minimum wage job uh, in a hotel cleaning tables. So, after six months, I quit my job that I really, really hated. And in 2013, uh, we planned our wedding party back home, so we bought a cropped uh, sensor camera to take some self-portrait for an album to present at the wedding reception. Uh, I really enjoyed the process and I thought, uh, what if I start photography? A year later, I decided to enroll in a photography school that was in Florida. Uh, after five months in school and investment of $5,500, I realized that I didn't learn much. So I withdrew from the last class and I spent the last month taking photos with other photographers that could actually teach me something new. Uh, from 2014 to 2015, I was practicing and doing free shoots for friends and in late 2015, I established my business in a small military town in North Carolina where my husband was stationed at that time. I was shooting anything from weddings to birthdays, families, kids, real estate, and anything I could put my hands on. I was charging a little money and I was all over the place shooting absolutely everything. So eventually um, I narrowed my services to mostly wedding photography. And I remember shooting about 35 to 45 weddings a year, all low budget weddings. And I was editing the images myself. I was a natural light photographer. At that time, I was still doing shoot and burn and I was really burned out. In 2017, we moved to Florida and that's where I realized that I'm a small fish surrounded by sharks. I felt like an amateur next to the Florida photographers. Uh, on top of that, I rented a studio, which I never had before, and my business expenses tripled. 
I didn't have time for trials and errors, so I hired Brett Florence, a Nikon ambassador, as a mentor to guide me. And for six months straight, Brett pushed me out of my limits, critiqued my images, motivated me, and sent me to do projects after projects where I was able to build a solid, professional, outstanding portfolio. Uh, my new portfolio won awards at WPPI, BPA. Uh, it got me an ambassadorship with Alien Chrome. It was bringing me high paying wedding clients and established my credibility and authority within the other photographers in the industry. Uh, by early 2020, I was running a successful studio and I was one of the top photographers in the market. But then COVID came and my business crashed. I had no clients. I, so I started to experiment and gain new skills. Every time I learned something new, I shared it on YouTube. I started getting more and more uh, requests on boudoir photography, on posing and lighting. So in 2021, I founded Believe in Boudoir and I created a boudoir photography master course bundle with uh, 20 courses. At that time, it was the most complete boudoir bundle course. Then we expanded with floral portrait photography courses, which is an exclusive portrait genre, and then uh, moved on to nude photography courses. By the end of 2022, I was considered one of the most influential boudoir and nude photographers in the US and in Europe. Not to mention that we failed several times, but we made assessments, um, reorganized and started fresh again. Currently, I have the largest boudoir and nude photography educational platform with over 40 courses on boudoir, nude and portrait photography. And we have about 30 more courses scheduled. What makes my platform, which is called BIB TV or Believe in Boudoir TV, different from others uh, is that it was not produced by large marketing companies or big productions. It was created by myself and my husband over a three year period. It got there by lack of sleep, hard work and sacrifice. So. This webinar, The Photographer's Roadmap from Start to Success, is based on years of personal experience, trials and errors, drifting off-road and getting back on track, uh, obstacles, and most importantly, skills that I accumulated by working seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day as a photographer. So I hope after watching this webinar, you can save yourself years of uh, errors and just follow this roadmap to success. If you see that you're ahead of yourself, you may have to go back a few steps, but trust me, this will help you in the long run. Okay, so let's get started with the content of the webinar. There are 13 checkpoints on the photographer's roadmap from start to success. These points are in order and I will be discussing each point briefly. Uh, as I talk about each point, you should be able to self-assess and figure out where you are at and what you need to work on. The very first step is to master the fundamentals of photography. But before that, we need to understand what photography is. Most photographers look at photography as a business or as a hobby, but it's actually a form of art and any form of art requires mastering the fundamentals of art, such as colors, compositions and framing, uh, lighting, shadows and highlights, perspective, shapes and knowing the tools. These apply to digital arts, drawing, animations, design, cinematography, photography, and every other form of art. So let's start with colors. Colors set the mood of the image and evoke certain emotions. Uh, colors also create contrast and harmony in the image. The main things you should know about colors are the psychology of colors, what are the primary, secondary, tertiary colors? Sorry, I can never pronounce that word. <laughs> what is hue, saturation, luminosity? How to create a tint, shade, or tone of a, of a hue? What are the seven color har harmonies? How to read a color wheel? Um, what are the color models? What is color space? And how to create a color scheme? An image will stand out when the colors are chosen intentionally. 
Composition is another important fundamental in photography. There are over 20 different compositions and we should master them all. Just to name a few are uh, rules of thirds, symmetry, uh, leading lines, uh, frame within the frame, fill the frame, negative space, balanced elements, golden ratio, isolate the subject, and many, many more. Lighting is one of the most common problems when it comes to photography, but just knowing the fundamentals will help us improve our photography. When it comes to lighting, we have lighting positions such as the front lighting, back lighting, side lighting, top lighting, and up lighting. We also have a variety of lighting such as uh, key light, fill light, rim light, uh, kicker, catch light, motivated lighting, and accent light. Then we have portrait lighting such as Rembrandt, loop, uh, clamshell, butterfly, side lighting, short lighting, and broad lighting. We also have lighting styles such as high key and airy, low key or moody, silhouette, semi-silhouette, noir, or uh, one-point lighting, three-point lighting, five-point lighting. We also need to measure, measure the quality and quantity of light and learn how to control light using modifiers. Side by side with lighting go shadows. Seeing and creating the shadows is as important as highlights. Some other fundamentals of photography are perspective, framing, depth of field, and uh, shapes and forms, which is basically related to posing when photographing people. We need to know how to create triangles or V-shapes and accentuate the curves or S-shapes when posing people. Everything we talked about uh, are just the basics of art that every photographer should master and all of it can be learned without having the camera. Learning the tools to create the art is the last step of mastering the fundamentals of art. You should only move to the next step if you already know the basics of art and there is nothing wrong with going back to step one and revisiting um, these key elements. Uh, I had to do it myself too. So the next checkpoint on this roadmap is buying the equipment. To start with, you need to know uh, what your budget is and work within your budget. Don't go and buy the most expensive camera that you, want, you won't probably even need. I bought my last uh, camera in 2018 and I'm still not planning to upgrade because I don't need it. To start with, uh, you need five main things. A camera, a lens, a light, five-in-one bounce board or reflector, and an ND filter. What you need to know is the difference between these equipment. We have two main types of cameras for professional photography, which are DSLR or mirrorless. Each one has a type as well, like full frame 35 millimeter or FX, which are the same, uh, and cropped sensor APS-C or DX. What camera you should choose is up to your budget, photography genre or preference. Uh, for example, new cameras have the eye detect tracking technology, which is great for wedding photography, but it won't help us new photographers when photographing a booty. <laughs> uh, let's talk about lenses now. Uh, we have prime lenses and zoom lenses. Each has their own pros and cons. Each lens is divided into two groups of fixed aperture lenses and variable aperture lenses. Fixed aperture lenses are, of course, better, but a lot more expensive. Now, each of those lenses are divided into their focal length. Uh, generally, if you cover from 24 to 200 millimeter focal length, uh, you have pretty much all the lenses. Sometimes you might need a special purpose lens, such as a macro lens, and that depends on what you photograph. Lighting equipment can also be difficult to choose with all the options out there. And generally speaking, we have um, speed lights, we have strobes, continuous or constant lights, and hybrid lights, which are continuous and strobe. The choice of light depends on where and what you photograph. 
If you shoot outdoors, you need a light that overpowers the sun, so your light should be powerful. If shooting in a um, uh, lighting control environment, for example, like a home studio or a studio, regular strobes or flashes would probably work. If shooting photos and videos, uh, maybe continuous uh, or hybrid lights would be the best option for you. So knowing what you like to photograph should determine your gear and if you change your mind down the road, that's totally okay. Uh, we really won't know what we want to shoot until we're close to um, reaching the destination of this map. So go easy on the money and save it for when you are more determined. Now moving to the third step, which is practicing and experimenting. In this phase, uh, you need to photograph at different times of the day and experiment with both natural light and ar uh, artificial light to feel the difference. Shoot at sunrise, at noon, under harsh light, during golden hour, at night, and when it's overcast. We need to experiment with each one and learn how to overcome their uh, unique challenges. Then practice in different environments, such as a small room, empty boarding apartment, colorful house, uh, in a studio, and discover what you like and what you prefer. Uh, one of the greatest ways to gain experience is actually to assist a wedding photographer. Wedding photographers shoot in every lighting condition and in unexpected environments, so it's great to assist them, them uh, and just watch how they work. Another great way to practice is to work with beginner models, uh, when maybe with family members or even friends. At this phase, it's okay not to work with professional models. Uh, while experimenting, it's important to discover your style and your favorite photography genre. Now uh, that we know the fundamentals, we have the equipment and we had lots of practice, it's time to tell everyone about your new journey. This uh, checkpoint is the personal branding and networking. This is where the majority of the photographers actually fail. They don't create personal branding and don't promote themselves as photographers. Our friends, family and colleagues, they all need to know what we do and that's the only way to spread the word. What usually happens is that photographers create a social media account and post their images, but they hide behind it. At this phase, you need to be extremely active and promote yourself. The first thing, you should create a, a style for yourself. Something to help you look and stand out uh, from the crowd uh, and for people to remember you. Your personal branding will determine who you will follow, um, sorry, who will follow you or whom your clients will be. Some other things you should do uh, besides creating a unique personal image are going to workshops, for example, and attending photographic conferences such as uh, imaging USA and WPPI in the United States or uh, professional imaging in Europe. Uh, these events are great for networking. Uh, they're great for learning and meeting your ideal fan photographers. What's more important is to take selfies, as many photos, short videos, photos with other famous photographers as, and post them on your personal branding social, uh, social media account. If you don't post them on social media, it's like you were never there. Um, but by posting people's, uh, but by posting people's first impression will be, oh, uh, you know, such and such, he or she is a professional photographer. And perception matters in this business. Next thing, your friends will reach out and ask for your services. Uh, by the way, don't shoot for free because that will just ruin the perception you just built. So stay active on social media, work on your personal image and branding, and go to every photographic conference and workshop that you can. Now, it's the exciting part, building a portfolio. I have an hour long webinar on building a portfolio that is on uh, BIB TV, and I think you can watch uh, the replay for free. 
but it's very, very important part that determines how well your business or page will do. So by now, you should already be an established photographer as a, uh, you should have the skills and uh, you sort of need to know what direction you're going. Uh, knowing your direction is very critical, so you don't waste time and money like I did and thousands uh, of other photographers did. That doesn't mean you need to 100% lock yourself in that direction and that you can shift. Uh, you can and you will, but it's best to establish a strong foundation that will last long term. This is the fastest and cheapest way to begin a successful uh, to begin as a successful photographer. Just as an uh, just uh, as an example, if you look at John Gray's portfolio, who is an educator for a very long time, you will see that uh, his portfolio is consistent, and I can spot John Gray's work from hundred other images. That means he has his own photography and editing style. He has a solid niche and he has his unique clientele. Here are a few things you need to do to build your portfolio. And again, if you want to learn more on portfolio building, uh, watch my webinar, 15, uh, 15 Steps to Building a Marketable Portfolio on BIB TV, and it's free. So first, you need to figure out what photography genre you want to focus on. That would be portraits, boudoir, events, sports, and so on and so on. Uh, step two, you need to do marketing research and find out what genre will best serve you. Uh, that would be the genre that is either trending, maybe demanding, or lacking a photographer. Um, then you need to pick a niche and build your portfolio based on that niche. Let's say uh, if you like portrait photography, you need to choose a niche like family portrait, senior portrait, business headshots, and so on. If it's a boudoir, that could be plus size boudoir, male boudoir, couples boudoir. If it's events, it could be weddings or birthdays. Anyways, you get, uh, you get the point. However, that doesn't mean you can't have more than one niche. Uh, you could do it all, but you want people to recognize you with a niche. Believe it or not, I book more headshots than boudoir, but everyone recognizes me as a boudoir photographer. So once you have all that figured out, hire professional models that are going to look like your clients. Basically, by doing that, you are targeting your own clients. You want your clients to resonate and relate to your images in your portfolio. This is really critical to avoid targeting the wrong clientele. Let's say you do headshots and you want to target big companies with uh, 10 plus employees. So you need to photograph models of different ages, ethnicities, and gender in, let's say, nice suits uh, that will convince the companies that you are a corporate headshot photographer. Adding a headshot of your child will not get you there. <laughs> When you're building your portfolio, everything needs to be styled and with the purpose of targeting your desired client. You need to have full pre-planned session for your portfolio. Again, please watch my other webinar for portfolio building. And next, uh, you need to find a reliable retoucher and outsource all your images for editing. Last thing you want uh, in your portfolio is an inconsistent editing style. And remember, you are a photographer and you're not a retoucher. Let them do the job for you and save your time on photography rather than learning and experimenting on editing. Lastly, submit your images for awards and try to win some awards from well-known photographic competitions such as PPA or WPPI. Uh, submitting for awards will have two outcomes. Either you will win and get recognized as an award-winning photographer, or you will not win and you will improve your images. So regardless, submitting for an award is a win-win situation. Uh, by the way, you just want to have enough images for your portfolio to start your business. So around 15-20 good images is enough to start. So let's now move to the sixth checkpoint on the map, and that is creating a photography business. At this phase, we are just creating a brand and legitimizing it. 
To have a successful business, you want to have a solid business foundation. Uh, the very first step is to come up with a business name. You want the name to be unique and to be um, relatable. It should be available on Instagram. It should be available for a de domain purchase. Uh, if one or another is not available, move to the next option that is available. Last thing you want is to have a separate business name, um, Instagram account and website. That is just bad business from the very start. For example, if your business name is Lux Boudoir, um, your Instagram should be Lux Boudoir and your website should be Lux Boudoir as well. There are three directions for photographers where, uh, when choosing a business name and this will determine how far you can expand as a photographer. If you want to stay local and not thinking about expanding, which is totally okay and profitable, uh, then pick a name that will determine your location and genre. Uh, for example, I'm in Lake Mary, Florida, and I do boudoir, so that would be, let's say, Lake Mary boudoir. However, since Lake Mary is a small town, I would target the closest largest city, which is Orlando, and name it, let's say, Orlando boudoir. In fact, I did it, and later I realized I can expand, so I had to rebrand. The next is to go with just a business name, uh, leaving the location out. Uh, this way you're open to other locations and in case you move to a different state or city, uh, it will not impact your business. An example of that could be um, epic portraits. No matter where you go, the business name can go with you. The third direction is for those who want to expand internationally and want to become an educator, for example, speaker or an influencer. With this direction, your name is your brand. And it is best to choose your name as your business. For example, Yulia Panchenko Photography, by the way, Panchenko is my maiden name, and I chose my maiden name because we never know how relationships can go. So if something went wrong with my marriage, I would have had to build a new business with a different uh, name. So again, visualize yourself and business for the next 10 years and pick a business name that is appropriate to your goals. Next step is to officially register your business. Every country and state has different laws, so find out what the laws are in your area. In the US, we have to register our business and get a tax ID or EIN, employer identification number, in order to open a business bank account. Uh, when registering your business in the US, there are two main ways to go. Uh, you can either register as a sole proprietorship or as an LLC. With uh, the sole proprietorship, the photographer is responsible for taxing and is liable for everything that goes wrong during a shoot. With the LLC, if anything goes wrong, the company is responsible and no one can sue you, uh, the photographer, I mean. With LLC, you can also claim most of your business expenses to include modeling and editing expense, subscriptions, uh, traveling, and anything you spend on your business. This is something you need to do uh, a research on and pick what works the best for you and for your business. However, without the registration, you cannot open a bank, uh, a business bank account, which means your business expenses will be mixed up with personal expenses, which means you, can't, um, you can claim your expenses properly and everything will go just south. <laughs> so once you register your business and get your EIN or other documents, uh, then you need to open a business bank account. This account should only be used for business and business expenses. Every penny goes in or out should be business expense or business income only. Next, you want to create a unique logo. Don't do it yourself in Photoshop. Logos should be vector graphics and not pixel graphics. Uh, they come in um, certain sizes and formats uh, that we will need um, along the way. Uh, you can find a professional logo makers on Etsy, Fiverr, or uh, you, you can create it yourself on Logo Maker. Um, that's a logo maker design uh, platform such as Wix Logo Maker and so on. Uh, next is to create a business plan. 
A business plan could be as simple as a, a business goal. Let's say it could be something like my business expenses are $1,000 a month and I need to earn, let's say, $3,000 a month. Uh, I also need to save $1,000 a month in the business account. So my goal is to make a minimum of, let's say, $5,000 a month. So if my boudoir business session starts at $3,000, then I need a minimum of two sessions a month to reach my minimum goal. Now, how you will get that two sessions a month has to do with marketing, which we'll talk about later. Finally, you need to know the area and the client you want to serve. Uh, that is important for the next steps uh, when we get to marketing. So make sure you have a psychographics and demographics of your desired client and you know the cities and areas uh, you want to focus on. Okay, so now let's move to the next uh, crucial checkpoint, which is product development. One important difference between a struggling photographer and a successful photographer comes down to the product you offer to your client. A photographer's service on its own has no value. Uh, same goes with digital files. They have absolutely no value on their own. And if you are that photographer who gives away digital files, you're basically telling the client that your work is not worth the print. This is the hardest point to break into and mostly everyone is just stuck at that point. The reason being the majority of the photographers are so scared of offering a product and can't say no to digital files. And as a result, they're all at this point fighting each other and uh, beating on who will give more digital images for less price. This is, a, this is the point that many photographers either go out of business or they find another job and uh, rarely get booked. So if you're that photographer, just make a strong decision and say no to digitals and offer high quality products. Trust me, I know it's scary. I know you think it's risky and I know it's a difficult decision, but all successful photographers have made that strong decision. I had to do it as well. I, uh, I was also a shoot and burn photographer until I said no, and believe me, the profit we mostly get is from that product. Photography is a form of art, and in our industry, the art has no value if it's not tangible. So before you launch your business, find the right album or print company and order samples to show to your clients. I personally work with Conpoli. This is a European based company that offers handcrafted albums and high quality prints. Remember, people will only buy what they see. So it's important to have prints and albums on you to show to your clients. I have a full webinar about selling prints as well, so check that on BIB TV as well. Now let's move to the A checkpoint on the roadmap, pricing. To price yourself right, you should do three things. Calculate your expenses, learn the average price on the market and build your packages. You can either create an a la carte menu and sell your services and prints separately, or you can build packages that includes all the services and products. This depends on photography service you offer and on your sales, salesperson skills. Uh, for example, I have minimal salesperson skills, so my pricing model is not based on a la carte menu. I sell packages that include a service fee, hair and makeup, and a final product. However, I do have an a la carte menu as well to upsell and add more images and more prints. Pricing yourself right is not easy and you may have to modify it a few times, but once you start your business, don't go low on your prices just because everyone else is. In fact, if you offer a high quality product, you can increase your prices when everyone is decreasing and that will separate you from the market. But again, you have to have a high quality product that is worth the price. Now let's move on to the ninth step, which is building a reliable team. As photographers, we always depend on collaborations and having a reliable team will always help us to plan our sessions better. Uh, for most, we need a few makeup artists, uh, hairstylists, 
clothing designers, florists, videographer, retouchers, and most importantly, models. Uh, this team can help us to create more unique images with their ideas incorporated. Uh, they save us time in preparation and they help us expand our business. Imagine a project where you have a clothing designer, a model, makeup artist, editor, and a videographer. If each person does their job and shares the final images, uh, that has five, um, five times more impact on your image and business than if you try to do everything by yourself. Working alone will just exhaust you out. So create a team and keep referring one another to clients and have your own little network. Now it's time to move forward and create a business portfolio. By now you should um, literally have everything you need to start your business. You have your professional images, you have your personal brand, business brand, you have a product to show to your clients, you have a team, and most importantly, you have all the skills that you will set uh, your business for success. The first thing you need for a business portfolio is a professional headshot and maybe some professional casual images of you in action, taking photos. Uh, I know us photographers don't like our photos being taken, but uh, this is a must. Second, you need to build your own website. This is something that you should learn yourself because um, you will constantly be working on it to improve it and you don't want to chase someone for months asking them to make a small change when you can do it in 30 seconds. Any website platform will work, but I recommend Squarespace and that's just because I have been using them for 10 years and I was always happy with them. Uh, this will take a maximum of one week to learn and to build. I recommend making something simple. All you need in the navigation is a portfolio page, about page, a contact page, and uh, for sure a blog page. In the footer, uh, you need the uh, privacy policy, the copyright, testimonials, and maybe a Q&A page. Don't make your website busy and make it easy as, um, as easy as possible for clients to find you and contact you. Next, you need to create your social media accounts. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube are most important. You will need YouTube to upload your behind the scenes work, uh, your fun projects, testimonial, testimonials, and so on. You don't need to be a YouTuber to run a business, but you need to have videos on YouTube for clients to see. Uh, that's why you need a videographer in your team. Your social media account should answer the five W's. What, where, why, who and when, and basically what is your business, where are you located, who are you, when do you work, and why are you doing this business. Mine would be Yulia Panchenko, boudoir photographer, Orlando, Florida, open Monday, Friday, 9 uh, a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, booking clients. All that information should be exactly the same across all social media accounts. Next is to open a Google business account. This is very important. This account will bring your business on Google listing, help you get reviews and help clients to discover you on Google. If you have a business address, make sure, make sure you also add your business address on maps um, on Apple so people can locate your business on maps and on Google maps. Uh, Google will need to verify your business by mail, so they will send you a code. Uh, don't lose that envelope once you receive it. Now it's time to ask for reviews from all those free family sessions you did, the models you worked with, and the collaboration, collaborators you worked with. Uh, this is probably the hardest part, but try to start with 10 to 20 uh, five-star reviews. Uh, this is crucial to attract clients. Also, always respond to all reviews. Now you can officially go public with your business, but wait, you can't promote your business yet. You should only make sure everything is working, nothing is missing, no gaps, no loopholes anywhere, and most importantly, if you search for your business, you do show up on Google search. 
If not, you need to go back uh, to the website and make sure you have filled out all the SEO um, sections correctly. Moving on to the next checkpoint, and that is creating a CRM system. A CRM system is a lifesaver. It collects the emails for you, it sends automatic emails for you, it collects your payments and it categorizes all your expenses and income. So when it's time for your taxes, you can send that report within a click of a button. Having an automated system that collects emails and builds your clientele is extremely important and most photographers skip that um, just because um, they don't want to learn another new thing. Uh, or they save money on that. I, I didn't use a CRM system for the first five years of my career and eventually I decided to make a week of photography and learn the system. Once I learned it, I was so upset at myself for not doing it for five years. Again, it's a bit of learning curve, but it's so useful and it's important for every business. I use 17 hats, um, but I heard HoneyBook is another good one. Okay, we're almost reaching the end of the map and have just a couple more checkpoints. Now you're completely ready to move to the next point, which is marketing. It is time to tell everyone about your business and start making sales. Here you should be spending the majority of your time. The ratio between marketing and actually photographing clients should be about 8 to 2. So 80% of the time goes for marketing and 20% photographing clients. Now here's the problem. The photographers spend minimum time on marketing and then complain that they have no clients. In fact, I spend 90% of uh, my time on marketing. Uh, let's talk about 9 to 5 job 5 days a week. And that's normal working hours that the majority of the people work. Uh, when we go to work at 9, um, we work all the way until 5 p.m. productively with only a 30 minutes lunch break, right? So every photographer should put the same amount of hours and effort. Of course, um, However, if we were shooting clients from nine to five, we should probably be making more money than a surgeon, but that's not the case. We can only handle five to 10 sessions a week. Uh, if you're a wedding photographer, then probably two to four sessions a week. If you're a headshot photographer, maybe you can go over um, 10, 15 sessions a week. Regardless, on average, we spend about one to three hours a day actively photographing clients. So basically that's a 9, to, 9, 9 a.m. to um, 12 p.m. job. What about 12 p.m. to 5 p.m.? Those hours should be spent productively on marketing. And that's what is neglected the most. We go from home to location, um, uh, to do a session and go back home, or we ate it for those five hours, which is the worst uh, possible thing to do unless you're a retoucher. Photographers spend so much time on editing and, neg and they neglect marketing and eventually they fade away. Outsource that please and focus on marketing only. Now, let me give a few marketing strategy tips. Uh, based on my experience, uh, the best one is a word of mouth strategy. This is the best way to promote your business, but you need to achieve the three R as I call it. Uh, those three R's are review, return, and refer. So if your client uh, leaves a five-star review, if they return for another session, and if they refer you to others, then the word of mouth strategy worked. Nowadays, clients don't verbally refer you. Social media made that job easy for us. Uh, just by posting their images on social media and tagging you, uh, you will get that referral. Or someone can post on Facebook asking for a good headshot photographer and if uh, you did your job right, uh, your clients will recommend you for sure. Uh, the second best marketing strategy is email marketing. This is only work if you have the CRM system that we talked about and you collect emails. Now, this strategy is based for bringing back the existing clients. Uh, you can always announce promotions, holiday sessions, headshots, and product sales to your existing clients and remind them that you're still out there uh, working for these clients. <laughs> Clients want to be reminded and they are looking for sales. 
Also, this strategy will work only if you have your yearly promotional calendar, which should, be, which should have been done during the creating a business phase. Uh, next marketing strategy is internet marketing. Uh, this is where you update your website and SEO, and most importantly, writing blogs. Blogs are the most powerful form of discovery. On average, you should write two to four blogs a week to boost your website. A website without a blog is like an Instagram account without a post. I recently discovered this software that will write your blogs for you. It's uh, called Jasper and it made my life so much easier. Just keep in mind that once Jasper writes your blog, you need to make corrections and optimize it to your business and location. But as we know, the hardest part of writing uh, a blog is starting it and Jasper will do that in three seconds for you. So again, blog, blog, blog. Next is social media marketing. This is really simple, but yes, uh, yet most fail to do it correctly. Uh, posting an image or content on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever social media platforms you use is time consuming. But if you're doing it already, then spend some extra time to do it correctly and post consistently. Add 30 rel relatable hashtags, add your location, city and state, tag people, give credit to collaborators, uh, write a description and give a call to action. If posing on stories, add a link and customize the link. The link should, shouldn't say uh, yulepanchenko.com slash booking. Uh, you should change it to, let's say, book here, learn more, sign up. Uh, has to be a call, of, uh, call to action. Another few important things are posting frequently, keeping your accounts cohesive and uh, posting, on all, uh, posting on all platforms. Don't just stick to one social media platform. Next strategy is influential marketing. This is where you hire influential collaborators like models and makeup artists and do a project with them. Then they share the projects, tag you and their audience and clients become yours. You have no idea how many times I received clients from my makeup artist. This is why building a team is important. And don't just stick to the same influencers, work with several of them so you can expand your audience and clientele. Last strategy, which is my least favorite marketing strategy, is advertising marketing. If you do every other marketing strategy we talked about, you will not need advertising marketing and you can save your money. And if you don't do any of the other marketing strategies and think that you can just pay and boost your business, then you're wrong. Clients will investigate your business from bottom to top after clicking on that ad. And if they see that you're not active, they will look for the next photographer. And you will be paying for ads and wondering why no one is booking. So try to market your business organically. Once you reach a level where you're happy, then you can start advertising marketing just to stay on top of your game with your competitors. I know this was a lot and seems overwhelming, but this is what you should do the other five hours that you are not shooting. We have finally reached the 13th check Point, which is our final destination. You're now officially, officially a successful photographer, but there are things you need to do at this final destination or your competitors will come and, will come and take your spot. You need to constantly write blogs as long as you are in business. You need to beg for those reviews and send out reminders. You have to constantly remarket to your existing clients and bring them back for another session. You need to invest in your business, in yourself and equipment to stay up to date with the technology and trend. You need to stay active on social media. You have to push to get uh, photographic awards every year from accredited competitions. You need to continue learning. You need to continue experiment with new styles and continue to master your skills. Eventually, you may become an educator, gain popularity and start your own workshops. It took me about five years to discover this roadmap. But if you watch this webinar, 
completely and follow it in detail, it may take only uh, 6 to 12 months to be well established. I must warn you, this map is full of obstacles that will try to stop you, but you should only focus on the destination, enjoy the journey and be focused and be determined. Here are some of the obstacles you may face. Self-doubt, staying in your comfort zone, skipping steps, doing low quality work just to check the box and move forward, being scared to try new things, fear of unfamiliar environments, temptation to lower your price to get booked more, and finally work for free for friends and family. You should not fall in any of these traps and just follow the map and move forward. If you feel like something is not working right, it is maybe because you skipped a phase or you're moving too fast. Just take a step back, reassess yourself, talk to a few professional photographers and go back to the checkpoint you should be at. In some cases, you have to go back to the checkpoint one and learn the basics, which I had to do myself as well. There is nothing wrong with that. I still go back and I refresh my knowledge. Absolutely no shame in that. Actually, the biggest challenge here is going to the very first checkpoint, which is mastering the fundamentals of photography. And here is where the offer that I promise you comes. I created a photography educational platform with a focus on boudoir and nude photography, but I also have portrait photography courses on there as well. Soon we'll have Photography 101, Lighting 101, and many more portrait courses. However, with the boudoir and nude photography, I focus heavily on posing and lighting. I focus mainly on boudoir and nude is because these genres are the foundation of photography. Any form of art like painting or a sculpture started from a nude body. When working with a nude person, there is no room for mistakes and we need to be the master of posing and lighting because every mistake will be visible. Unlike portrait photography, where you need to focus on, uh, only on the face or wedding photography, where the body is covered in fabrics and we don't see the hips, the legs, the feet. In nude or boudoir photography, we have to focus on posing from head to toe and need to lead up the body from head to toe. So if you're a master boudoir and nude photography, you have mastered all other photography genres where people are the subject. Uh, my photography platform, Believe in Boudoir TV or uh, BIB TV, is the most complete and comprehensive boudoir and nude photography platform out there. We currently have 40 courses and we're constantly adding new courses. This is by far the largest boudoir and nude photography platform. The current value of all courses goes up to $2,500. However, we price it all at $900, which is one-time payment, where you get a lifetime, a lifetime access to all our current and upcoming courses. But that's not it. Since you are kind enough to stay with me until the end of the webinar, we'll give you an additional 50% discount and all you have to pay today is only $450 to get full access to all our current and upcoming courses. Use the promo code YP50 at the checkout to apply the discount code. In the all access bundle, you will have courses from basic to uh, advanced level. You will have niche photography courses such as maternity boudoir, bridal boudoir, bodyscape, nude photography, fine art nude for female uh, and male, uh, couples boudoir and nude uh, floral portrait photography, and many, many more. Uh, you will also have access to intermediate courses such as fundamentals of posing, portrait lighting, color theory, and many other courses. As I mentioned, the all access bundle will give you access to upcoming courses such as Photography 101, Lighting 101, Headshot Photography, Dramatic Black and White Portrait Photography, Videography 101, Body Figure Nude Photography, Lighting for Nude Photography, and 20 more courses. 
I designed this platform to where and this is not a single gap, there is not a single gap or question left. And if you pay attention to every lesson, you will help you, it will help you to become the master of photography. Now let's answer some of the frequently asked questions to see if this is the right course for you or not. I'm a beginner photographer. Are the courses too advanced for me? No, we have courses for beginners, intermediate and advanced levels. In fact, you can filter the courses by your photography level and find the right course for you. Do you have any courses on marketing? Yes, we do. We have several courses on marketing, prices and sales as well. Uh, these courses uh, are in lecture or in a webinar format. I'm not able to afford the all access uh, purchase. Do you sell courses separately? Yes, we have other smaller bundle options available for purchase that focus on one genre and we have individual course purchase options as well as a yearly su subscription. However, you will um, get the most of the money uh, with the all access bundle purchase. I'm a wedding photographer. How would this benefit me? Well, every bride is a potential um, bridal boudoir or boudoir client. So is every husband, wife, man and woman. Regardless of what photography you do, your clients are potential boudoir clients and boudoir and nude photography is one of the most profitable and trending photography genres that your competitor has already added to their packages. So why shouldn't you offer it? I'm not good at online learning. How would this help me? Uh, if you're more like um, an in-person hands-on learning type, uh, then you can attend one of my boudoir and nude photography workshops around the world and always come back to the platform to refresh your memory and skills. It is always helpful to revisit what you've learned. Uh, will we be able to contact the instructor after the purchase and the all access bundle? Yes, I'm always available for you um, and talk to all my students either on Instagram, YouTube or on our private Facebook group Believe in Boudoir. Will I have access to the platform from countries other than US? Yes, this platform is available globally and you can access it from anywhere and from any device. These were some of the frequent, uh, frequently asked questions, but if you have any other questions, you can ask me right here in the chat room and I will get back to you as soon as possible. You can also leave a comment or question on my YouTube channel, Yulia Panchenko. My Instagram is Believe in Boudoir or email me at info at believeinboudoir.com. I'm always reachable, always responsive and approachable, so don't hesitate to reach out to me. Please follow this roadmap and I promise it will help you with your photography career. If you didn't see the full webinar, don't worry, you will get to watch the replay tomorrow. This concludes my webinar. I hope I was able to, um, I hope I was able to give you some new information and inspire you. Wish you all success in your career and I look forward to seeing you in person one day. Bye.